as the third launch of Starship approaches, in addition to the infrastructure serving the launch, which is constantly being upgraded, and the Starship prototypes, there is another equally important detail that we rarely pay attention to. The Starship's heat shield system. Why do I mention the heat shield system? Because in all Starship launches and tests, to a greater or lesser extent, there have been instances of heat shields falling off. Even in the two most recent Starship launched last year, the heat shield system of Starship still did not ensure resilience to vibrations when Starship was ignited. This can be easily observed with the naked eye. On the other hand, heat shields are crucial for the operation of a reusable orbital rocket that must pass through the atmosphere to return to Earth. When objects approach or re-enter the Earth's atmosphere, they undergo acceleration due to gravity while simultaneously encountering atmospheric drag or friction. These factors subject the object to extreme mechanical stress and intense aerodynamic heating. This creates a spacecraft speed upon re-entry of over 7 to 12 kilometers per second, along with temperatures exceeding 1600 degrees Celsius. This combination of forces can lead to mass loss, technically known as ablation or even complete disintegration. The phenomenon of falling stars is a visible manifestation of this process. Its body glows bright red. And spacecraft are no exception. They can melt if there's no protection. The most feasible way to dissipate this energy is through gradual slowing via atmospheric dissipation. This process effectively converts velocity and kinetic energy into heat, underscoring the need for robust heat shielding. Some may wonder why retro rockets aren't used to gently slow the vehicle for re-entry. However, the forces involved are so immense that it would be virtually impossible for a space vehicle to carry enough fuel to slow down sufficiently for re-entry. Until advancements such as nuclear space propulsion or anti-gravity engines become feasible, relying on heat shielding and gradual atmospheric friction remains the only practical method for completing the re-entry process. These shields work by covering a large rounded surface with compounds that when superheated during re-entry, burn off. This dissipates the heat as the material is burned away. A gassy barrier forms that further insulates from heat. However, the heat shields, when installed on spacecraft, appear to be more complex than we think. Similar to the heat shields falling off the Starship during liftoff that I mentioned, the complexity of heat shields is also a challenge that is no longer strange in the aerospace industry. Rewind a couple of decades back to the 1980s. Ground crews observed extensive tile damage after the shuttle Atlantis touched down at Edwards Air Force Base in December of 1988. Atlantis sustained heavy damage to its heat shield during STS-27, suffering over 700 damaged or missing tiles. This poses significant damage to the spacecraft and can potentially threaten the safety of the crew inside. Fortunately, there was a steel plate that absorbed most of the heat from re-entry. That's why the heat shield is the only key for the spacecraft to survive when returning. The heat shields will heat up and burn away, dissipating the energy. With SpaceX, they have recognized the importance and challenges in designing and installing heat shields for their giant spacecraft. The company has developed innovative solutions different from what they've done before with Dragon. Unlike Dragon, which relies on a heat shield that undergoes ablation upon re-entry, Starship necessitates a reusable and insulating heat shield to facilitate its envisioned rapid reusability. This shift in approach reflects Starship's ambition to land, undergo a quick inspection, and promptly return to space without the need for extensive refurbishment. SpaceX uses fire-resistant tiles that can be replaced similarly to those on the bottom and nose of the legendary space shuttle. Starship uses ceramic thermal protection tiles to insulate the spacecraft from the heat of re-entry. The tiles, like those of the space shuttle, are extremely lightweight and fragile. However, unlike shuttle square tiles, Starship's tiles are hexagonal. The hexagon's a great shape because it, as Musk said, offers no straight path for hot gas to accelerate through the gaps. Interestingly, that shape helps to prevent the heat shield tiles from coming loose during re-entry, creating chain reactions. Essentially, when a hexagon pops off, that exposes the two hexagons in the next layer, but the force is shared over half the width of two hexagons, unlike a square grid where the full force is on one square. Granted, a brick pattern could be used for square tiles, and the space shuttle did a bit of this kind of tiling, but overall was pretty regular. Hexagons also present an angle to airflow, which I think is meant to help the air to flow smoothly rather than ripping. But also, the pressures during re-entry are generally less than during ascent for a vehicle that does a good lifting re-entry using the space shuttle data. And during re-entry, pressure is actually highest at low speeds when the vehicle has descended into the thicker atmosphere. 
Also, reentry is actually quite gentle and smooth compared with the rigors of launch and probably the flip landing burn, perhaps even static fire. I mean, it's hot, but it's not shaky or violent. So assuming the tile fastening doesn't become dramatically weaker with heat, if the tiles withstood ascent, they'll probably be okay during descent. It's also worth noting that during ascent, the airflow is generally at a better angle for ripping off tiles during EDL, entry, descent, and landing. Starship's mostly belly flopping, where pressure mostly presses the tiles into place, especially where the brunt of heating takes place. Now, this is not much comfort if during ascent most of the tiles get ripped off, but if the tiles stay on well during the static fire and launch ascent, EDL should go well too. On the other hand, SpaceX apparently does not want to glue the tiles on like what happened with the shuttle because it takes too much maintenance time for replacement and refurbishment. Instead, Starship's tiles are attached to the stainless steel exterior with studs. Elon also fixed the problem with the missing tiles on Starship by putting that white, flexible ceramic fiber mat between the back of the tile and the stainless steel of Starship. The mat's probably something like Cow Wool 3000, which can be used up to approximately 1530 degrees Celsius without stopping. Even if one or more tiles fall off, that mat's going to be stuck to the ship. In theory, Starship structure can thus withstand and remain functional at temperatures approaching 800 degrees Celsius, whereas the shuttle's heat shield had to keep the vehicle's aluminum structure below approximately 180 degrees Celsius. Of course, so far, Starship has yet to attempt to survive an orbital velocity reentry with some 25,000 ceramic heat shield tiles mounted directly to its steel skin. But if successful, SpaceX's ultra simple design could give Starship massive advantages over the shuttle, which ultimately proved to be more dangerous than traditional crew capsules and about as expensive as a similarly capable expendable rocket. The upcoming third launch is the moment Starship can prove the efficiency of these methods. Despite some heat shield tiles falling off during tests or trial launches, SpaceX has been developing over time, and we can see fewer tiles falling off with each passing day. You shouldn't be too concerned about this. Following the second Starship launch, Spaceship seems to have added a new design involving new rivet positions and a thin steel plate to enhance the robustness of the heat shield on Starship, helping it withstand strong vibrations when atop super heavy. Additionally, fire endurance tests with a maximum temperature of around 1650 Kelvin that's approximately 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit, about 1,375 degrees Celsius, are regularly conducted by SpaceX to ensure that each tile, when installed on Starship, will fully utilize its protective capabilities. This is part of a series of tests before the launch, which takes place soon. Indeed, this is something we're all looking forward to. And that's all for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments section below. Your feedback is very important to us, and helps us make better videos for you. Thanks so much for watching, and see you next time.